My name is Giuseppe Salio. I'm working as a hematologist at the University of Torino. I'm professor of hematology and responsible for the division of hematology. And since uh, many years, uh, my main interest in both clinical and research field is represented by chronic myelogenous leukemia, CML. Hello, my name is Giorg Schaaf. I'm from Israel. I am a CML patient for more than 17 years. Uh, I'm an advocate and I am the co-founder of the CML Advocate uh, Network, which is a group combining more than 115 patient, CML patient organizations from almost 90 countries. And it's always nice to see you and speak with you. You know that when I was diagnosed more than 17 years ago, I was told that my life expectancy is about three to four years. And this has changed with the new TKIs that came out since then and life expectancy of a CML patient today is almost like a normal person in the population. But there's a new concept coming out today, and many patients are very excited about it. It's called treatment for remission, TFR. Can you please explain to us what is actually TFR? I think that uh, TFR could be defined as long-lasting remission without the need of uh, taking the drug that was necessary at the beginning of the disease uh, to achieve uh, this remission. And this is an important step of the cure of the disease because uh, at the end uh, we can uh, uh, say that uh, TFR is really another way to say cure of the disease if the disease is not coming out after five years from the discontinuation. And if I may ask you, uh, you have patients on TFR, what is the longer period of time that you have patients who have stopped treatment? Uh, more than 10 years, more definitely than ten more years. than 10 years. They are in a complete uh, uh, remission. What are the main goals you think uh, for CML patient today when he starts treatment? Well, generally, I'm starting just uh, to say that fortunately enough, uh, uh, in our days, we have uh, very good drugs uh, that can defeat the leukemia. And the first goal uh, definitely is represented by the best possible overall survival and to, to achieve again uh, the same quality of life before the diagnosis of leukemia and uh, this is uh, the main aim of our therapy. But uh, I'm starting also to mention the possibility that maybe sooner or later we will be able also to discontinue the therapy without uh, having a recurrence of the disease. And uh, who are the patients who are eligible to go to TFR? Our patients uh, that are, uh, have obtained a very good molecular response, which means a very deep molecular response below the threshold that we define as MR4, MR4.5, which means uh, four logs less uh, with respect uh, to what, pres what was present at diagnosis. And uh, uh, this very long remission, we say, should last uh, for at least uh, two, three years before uh, trying to stop uh, uh, the, the therapies and this is what uh, we are aiming to at the moment. What do you think is the percentage of patient, CML patient, who will be able to stop treatment or reach DFR? At the moment, uh, uh, we have estimated uh, in our center, where we're following approximately 250 patients, that 30% of them are already, uh, already matching the criteria to try to stop the therapy. So I would expect that probably 20% of them can successfully discontinue the therapy. About 25 to 30 percent of the patients are known to suffer what we call the withdrawal symptoms, muscle and uh, bone pains, and how do you relate to that? Generally, these symptoms are not extremely relevant and can be, uh, I would say, treated with the common anti-inflammatory drugs and so on. So I wouldn't emphasize so much this withdrawal syndrome. Of course, uh, the in my opinion, is also in part a mixture of the anxiety of the patients uh, with remaining without, uh, I would say, the protection of the drug and the real symptoms, which are probably due to the fact that some of the function which were inhibited by the uh, tyrosine kinases have been now reactivated. But generally, they last a very few weeks and they tend to disappear uh, during the some months from the discontinuation of the therapy, and they are perceived by approximately only 30% of the patients. Very rare cases uh, required just uh, to reinitiate the drug. And from the patients who are stopping, can you tell us how many patients have to restart taking the treatment because the PCR or the response, they are losing their molecular response? 
It depends on when you decide to restart the therapy, if after the loss of uh, MR 4.5, for example, or after the loss of MMR. But I would say that there is a range of uh, people restarting the therapy in between 40% to 60% of the patients. What do you tell the patients who have not reached such a deep molecular response and they feel like they have failed and they are not doing okay with the treatment? How do, what do you tell them nowadays? I think that, that they are okay with their treatments. The problem is they are not yet ready and this is uh, the last uh, step of the therapy that we want sooner or later to reach. So they don't have to consider themselves, uh, I would say, as a failure, but simply patients who are not reached sufficient response uh, to stop the therapy. So if a patient is taking a drug and he's s uh, tolerating the side effect quite reasonably and he's doing well and have a good response and he feels that he doesn't want to risk this, what do you tell him? I think that uh, it should be a shared decision indeed because uh, you cannot force a patient who is doing well just uh, to try to stop the therapy because uh, you are convinced. Uh, so little by little I think that uh, if not at this time uh, but maybe one or two years later you will decide to stop the therapy. So I'm quite confident uh, that little by little this concept uh, will become common among patients. One of the issues that I think patients feel that the doctors are not relating enough to are the psychological effect of the stopping, even during the phase of stopping, the anxiety bef uh, before and waiting for the results of the PCR test. How can this be overcome? Talking to the patients, I would say, just uh, there should be a very good uh, dialogue between doctors and patients, and the patients uh, should uh, of course, uh, confess and reveal to the doctor that they have this type of anxiety. But what we know that uh, this is not a dangerous process uh, and for the moment because uh, out of more than 3,000 patients that have tried to discontinue, the only one progression of the disease has been observed and we do not know if related to discontinuation or some other uh, reasons, that all the patients who are retreated uh, are achieving again a very good molecular response. When you are stopping a patient today, what is the standard of monitoring that you are requesting the patient to do? The requirements at the moment are quite strict. They, in most of the protocols, uh, we needed to have uh, one uh, uh, PCR analysis every month for at least the first uh, six months, then maybe uh, every two months for the uh, next uh, uh, six months uh, and so on. Um, coming back to the normal monitoring uh, frequency during the second year. Okay, and I think for my last question, I would like you to tell patients who have tried to stop and failed and they, re they relapsed, uh, do they have any hope for the future to stop uh, again? Absolutely, it has been uh, shown uh, recently at the, the ASH Congress uh, in uh, the end of 2016, patients who were retreated were able to achieve a very deep molecular response. In this case, 30% uh, of them was successful.